Is your prayer pleasing to God? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. minister shared in his church they were in desperate need of a person to teach a junior high boys class. It came down to a list with only one name on it. When the minister heard the name, he said, you have got to be kidding. He says now that he could not have been more wrong about that young man. He took the class and accomplished amazing things. The minister was so impressed that he invited the young man to his house for lunch and asked him the secret of his success. The young man pulled out a little black book. On each page, he had a picture of one of the boys and under the name were comments like, having trouble in math, or comes to church alone, or would like to be a missionary someday. And then the unlikely candidate said to the minister, I pray over those pages every day and I can hardly wait to come to church to see what God has been doing in their lives. Today's readings revolve around our attitude when we pray to God. Hosea, in the first reading, speaking in God's name, said, I want your constant love, not your animal sacrifices. I would rather have my people know me than burn offerings to me. Our prayers and sacrifices to God will be meaningless to Him if our love for Him and for our neighbor is one thing. We must pray with humility and a repentant heart if we want to reach God's ears. We must first ask for forgiveness for our sins and then come to Him acknowledging our dependence and helplessness without His help. In the Gospel reading, Jesus contrasts two people in the way they prayed. One blows his own trumpet of righteousness in prayer while being contemptuous of those who do not conform to religious standards, practices, and morals. The other acknowledges his sinfulness and his constant dependence on God. He does not judge anyone but himself alone. In our reflection today, we look at ourselves and ask the following. Do I take pride in my religiosity, exalting myself while looking at disdain at those who do not have the same fervor that I have in prayer and who lead immoral and godless lives? Do I forget to pray for others, including those who have hurt me, those who are difficult to love and to forgive? Do I pray without first asking for God's forgiveness for feeling blessed while being unmindful that others are also suffering? I remember this story about a businessman who was earnest in prayer to God during a prayer meeting. He blurted out, Thank you, Lord, for protecting me and my family from this virus. I am happy that we are not one of those who are sick right now. He moves on to pray for his other needs, forgetting to pray for the plight of others. Clearly, he was absorbed with himself and his self-satisfaction. Humility in prayer extends to humility in our personal life. Conceitedness borne out by high intelligence or wealth or stature and position or seeking and constantly basking in the praise of others can block the grace of God from reaching us. Picking up our cross, dying to oneself, forbearing with others, seeking the well-being of others alongside ours, and coming before God with an attitude of reliance and constant dependence assures us that our prayers will be heard and acted upon by a God who disdains sacrifice without genuine love for Him and our fellow men. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, keep me humble and transform me, my thoughts, intentions, and attitudes. And let me manifest this through acts of charity toward others especially those who have offended me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.